Um, so my name is Jen Sobel. I am the head of Futures and Skills at the BFI. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about the BFI Film Academy. And it's actually wonderful to go last in the order because I think colleagues who were speaking before me really set up the context really well and, and laid the ground for what the industry is looking like and not only why it makes sense for a young person to aim to work in the screen industry, so film and television, but also why it's a really exciting time. Um, so really, I think my presentation is a, it's a call to action. So um, we run the BFI Film Academy and we're starting recruitment for all of our courses now which run um, starting in September all the way until April 2020. So, um, and I'll go through the presentation, I'll tell you all about the courses, but the one thing that we know from the Film Academy, we've been running it for eight years, is that teachers are the number one way to get young people interested and signed up to courses like these. And even though we think the offer is amazing, um, we do struggle to get young people from all backgrounds to sign up to these courses for all the reasons that previous speakers may have listed. Parents, they don't see themselves working in the screen industries, they don't see the opportunities, they don't understand the pathways. But we absolutely know that when a teacher speaks to a young person and recommends that they take this course, that's how we reach all the young people that we want to. So bear that in mind. And um, I'm happy to speak to any of you afterwards. And I've got flyers and postcards and all the recruitment propaganda you could possibly need. Um, so the BFI Film Academy, it's in its eighth year. Um, we started in 2012. It was actually established in response to the Henley Review for Cultural Education, um, which placed an emphasis on every child um, having the right to a cultural education and skills. Um, when we started in 2012, it was quite a small program. We ran uh, 20 courses across, the, across England back then uh, for 400 students, and we've grown quite a lot in scope and size since then, and we now operate in almost 50 locations across the UK, um, and we deliver the courses to 1,000 young people a year. So what is it? It's a practical course. So again, very, it's, it's based on learning practical skills. Um, and it's an inf informal education setting. So it's outside of school. Um, and it's delivered by partners that we work with right across the UK, brilliant delivery partners. And I think you'll be hearing from a couple of them today in different sessions. So they'll be, they won't be talking specifically, specifically about the Film Academy, but you can always ask them about the courses that they run. Um, it's for young people who are interested in a career in film. They don't have to have had any experience. They probably haven't, in fact. Um, they might not even know what a career in the film industry looks like, but they're interested in some <coughs> part of it. Um, they learn about craft skills, so they'll learn the stuff about how to turn on the camera, how to use editing software. They will work on a team over the uh, duration of the course, and at the end they'll all produce a film together, so they work on a team to do that. Um, Another big part of the Film Academy is about teaching young people about the different careers that there are in the film industry. So again, speaking to the point that I think all the three previous speakers made is that it's just not about directing, producing, and writing. There are thousands of other jobs in the film industry, and it's really about getting that message to young people and saying, um, you know, hold a boom mic, you know, stand up there, do that. We always encourage young people to apply for the sound role because they have the best chance of getting them. Um, production accountant, again, a really good example of, a, of um, a huge skills gap in the industry currently, and I know the studios are gagging for young people to work in production accounts and can't find them. Health and safety is another one. No young person, well, none that I've met have said, I really want to work in health and safety on a film set, but we've had a couple that have gone through that, and it's a really exciting role, and the industry is growing, and the young people that are going into those areas are the ones that are going to progress really quickly. So we try to teach them about that. And then there's a latent effects of the kind of, and I know this term isn't used as much anymore, the soft skills. So the communication, the confidence building, um, the meeting other young people, like-minded ones. Bear in mind that this course isn't only run in London, it's run right across the UK. So we operate in some quite rural locations where young people might not necessarily have the opportunity to meet other young people who have similar aspirations to them. So this course kind of brings them together like that. Um, as I mentioned, we deliver it through partners. So the BFI doesn't go out and deliver the courses. We work with local experts who um, are funded to deliver the courses on our behalf. So they range from organizations like the National Film and Television School, who are obviously quite established, to smaller um, arts, 
community type organizations like Creative Nation and Ipswich. Um, we work with venues, so Home in Manchester deliver a film academy, so all different shapes and sizes. <coughs> the criteria for being able to deliver a film academy is that you have links to schools, because of exactly what I said before. You have links to industry, so we want people who are working in the industry to come speak to the young people and talk about real working environments, um, and that they're able to deliver the course and they have the infrastructure. So those are the, the, the parameters for it. Um, so it's for quite a young age range, it's for 16 to 19 year olds. Um, and the criteria for getting on the course is you have to, you don't have to have any previous experience. You just have to be a resident in the UK. You have to be between the ages of 16 to 19 and you have to be able to commit to the duration of the course. And we do have quite a high retention rate. It's sitting between 92 and 96%. So we think the courses are pitched at the right level um, and the commitment that requires from young people at this age, because we know they're under pressure with exams, um, is, is, is all right. So the local courses will run for about 40 hours and up, so 40 to 60 hours on evenings and weekends, and then there are residential courses that we run during um, half-term times and also during Easter. So this is just um, setting out the actual courses we run. So we have 47 this year that run across the UK. Is there anyone here who's not from London? Yeah, where are you from? Um, Ascot. <laughs> Slough. Slough, yeah, we've, yeah, we've got a film academy in Slough. And uh, Chelmsford. Chelmsford. Um, Essex. Essex, yes, we've got one in Colchester. So Ascot, I'm going to have well, to. We're relatively near Slough. We're relatively near. So we have seven courses that run in London, <laughs> and the rest of them are outside of London, southeast, southwest, Scotland, Northern Ireland. So there's usually one that's accessible to young people. We operate in Department for Education opportunity areas because we're funded by them. So there's a strong emphasis on operating in areas where there's um, more higher social disadvantage. Um, and we also run seven residential courses. So <coughs> once you've gone through a, a local course, you can then progress onto a residential courses. And these are focused in areas which, again, Screen Skills mentioned are skills gaps. So we want to teach young people specific skills in animation, visual effects, as documentary filmmaking one screenwriting and also film programming because the BFI has its as well its remit to run exhibition and watching films so we run a, a programming course for young people who are interested in running film festivals or running their own film events and then we have two craft skills residentials one which is run by the NFTS in Beaconsfield and one in Edinburgh and those are once a year and young people will go there for two weeks um, and they'll take on a role either as production designer sound designer or director producer and they'll work together under industry experts for two weeks uh, working on industry standard equipment they have Ari Alexia's um, NFTS and they'll make a film which is then screened at the BFI South Bank so it's really fantastic opportunity um, so this is the locations that we run them I is, they're concentrated in London Southeast but they are across the UK and also the residentials are national so a young person doesn't matter where you're based you can go on those courses because you just travel there and you stay there for a week to two weeks so the course costs there's a there's the ethos of the film Academy is talent is everywhere but opportunity isn't and this course isn't targeted as such but it's a it's 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 a course that's meant to be representative of the uh, population so we want to make sure that there are no barriers to access the course the local courses the ones that we run um, during in, in um, <coughs> London are 25 pounds for the entire course but a young person can take a box and that means they can opt out of the fee so there's we really don't want any deterrence for a young person saying oh I don't think this is for me because even if there is a cost I don't think I can afford it so they're highly subsidized. We also have travel bursaries available, so anyone who needs um, a train fare or wants to needs to drive to get there, we can offer um, them bursaries for that, as well as childcare bursaries or whatever somebody might need to get them to the course. And as Green Skills said, they've just announced their bursary scheme, so there's loads of stuff um, out there now that will help a young person take opportunities like this um, if they otherwise wouldn't. The residential courses are means tested, but the highest a young person will pay for residential course is 400 pounds, and that's for a two week course, accommodation, food, and everything included. And again, those can be all those fees can be completely wiped and bursaries um, offered. Um, 
uh, so I just lastly before I'm going to show you a short film, but I want to talk about the after aftercare, I suppose, of the Film Academy. We um, we don't just want to take a young person in, then do the course, and then send them out. We try and support them after they finish their courses. So we've been running now for eight years. We have a number of different interventions after the courses that allow us to keep in touch with the students. Um, we keep in touch. They keep in touch with each other actually through um, a Facebook page. They still make films together. Um, they use each other for their crew, and we 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 have some really nice stories now of young people that went through the Film Academy in the first year and are now receiving funding from the BFI Film Fund to make their first feature, which is an amazing accomplishment if you think about the age the age that we're working with. And the funding that they're getting is to work with the young people that they, they met on the Film Academy course. So that's something that's really um, shows some impact in the longevity of the, of, the, um, of the courses. So what else do we do? We run Future Skills traineeship. So a few years ago, we developed a partnership with some of the big studios at Pinewood. At Pinewood. So we started off with Lucasfilm, who make the Star Wars franchise. Um, and they said, we want to get trainees on our set, and we want trainees um, who wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to work on a Star Wars film. We've all heard that a film set can be quite closed, it can be quite nepotistic, um, and so they wanted to open it up. So we placed 30 of our Film Academy alumni across a number of physical production roles working on um, the, uh, the solo film was the first one, so the Han Solo spin-off film. Um, and they worked in departments locations, um, we had the video DIT, what Gareth was talking about, we had someone doing marketing and franchise traineeship, uh, visual effects, props, everything. So really right across uh, the spectrum of <coughs> roles. And what's really nice about working with people at this age is that even though they say, I want to be a director, I want to be a producer, they're still, it's, it's malleable. You can say to them, oh, you want to work in production? get some experience working in production accounts, that will make you a better producer as you move through the ranks. And, and so we can kind of encourage young people to go into the different craft and technical routes, and a lot of the times it sticks. So the first round of future skills trainees that went through the round, all of them are working now, Not well, except for one, 96% of them are currently working, and that was two years ago. And they go on to work in other studio films, it's freelance, right? So they sometimes they get taken with their crew and they go work on other films. We've seen a few of them come back to the independent sector, which obviously is the BFI, we're very, uh, we want that. Uh, some of them have gone into TV because the skills are transferable, um, and some of them are going <coughs> for their own funding. So there's all different routes that they're taking, but I think the point is that once you make it, it an opportunity like this to work on a film set for nine months is one that will really kickstart your career. And just to add to that, these are fully paid traineeships, so it's not asking a young person to do an unpaid Internship, they're getting these ones were paid five fifty a week, um, and plus any bursary costs to help them get set up. So some of them were moving from Northern Ireland to come do the job. So we would give them the bursary to help set them up in Stone, <coughs> Pinewood, or in Uxbridge, wherever they base themselves. And then throughout the nine months, that's the the fee that they were making. So um, it allowed us to attract young people who probably wouldn't otherwise be able to just pick up and move um, across the country for something like this. We work with BAFTA very closely on mentoring. We know mentoring is a really great way to get young people um, or to keep them engaged, um, particularly in if we can find mentors that are geographically close to them. So BAFTA obviously has members UK-wide. So we offer 30 mentorships every year. And we also do career surgeries with BAFTA members. So that's really inspiring for young people is to listen to people who are not necessarily really high profile directors. That's that has a place, but also people who are one or two steps ahead of them. So people who have just gotten um, funding for their first feature. We really try and engage those filmmakers with these young people. Um, and I obviously have to mention Screen Skills, the work that they've been doing with the skills strategy has been excellent. And now there's a lot more opportunities for young people at the entry level stage, which is what Gareth was saying. So bursaries weren't available to um, entry level students before and they can take things like driving lessons which you kind of wouldn't think there would be bursaries for but in the, if you want to work in the film industry being able to drive is really really important and a lot of young people just don't have the licenses for various reasons so you can get a bursary to take driving lessons you can get it for equipment wet weather gear so if you're a locations person you're outside a lot you can apply for a bursary for that stuff so 
you know, if you know any students or young people that would benefit from this, I would say get them applying to that as soon as possible because it's a limited fund. Screen Skills also offer traineeships, so similar to the Future Skills ones, um, they work with a lot of the big studios, so we send our Film Academy students also through the Training Finder route, um, because that's also available for entry level students. Um, I'll leave it there. I'm going to finish with a film, which is quite nice. So it's a film that was made um, based on our first traineeship round, and it's interviewing three of the students that came from the Film Academy and worked on the solo uh, film. Nathan Lloyd. I am from Birmingham, UK. I am a camera trainee. My name's Shona Davis. I grew up in Northern Ireland. I'm in locations. Kathy has always been a big proponent of diversity and wanted to make sure we were looking behind the camera and not just in front. So we decided training was the concept. My name is Brahim. I grew up in a refugee camp in northwestern Africa. When I was 14 or 15, we got a color TV, and it's like a window to all the movies. I started to learn English three years ago. I am a video and DIT trainee. My name is Laurie Emily Brown, and I grew up in a small town called Larne, which is in Northern Ireland. I am a set PA in the Assistant Director Department. My name's Jordan Feemster. I grew up in Essex, a county just north of London. My role is sound trainee. In my typical day as a camera trainee, I usually come in quite early and just get the day rolling, so that means, you know, starting up the cameras, making sure everything's clean and taken care of, replacing the batteries, making sure they have enough batteries throughout the day. What we do is make sure that people can focus on the creative aspect of the film while we manage all the logistics. So we make sure that craft has power or that cast have somewhere to go to get changed. My job consists of coming in every morning and making sure that we are giving video feeds to the directors and to everyone else who needs a feed to be able to see what's happening on camera. We do get to see how some of the best of the best do their roles. Bradford's genuinely a nice guy, so sometimes he will come around and just say hello, he'll talk to you. When you've seen this guy that's done Salma, Most Violent Year, and then you finally get to meet him in person, it's, it's, it's amazing. It does make you think like, wow, I'm actually here on Star Wars, which is a, a tremendous experience. Well, camera operator is something I, I really do wish to achieve, but then I'm also looking at, you know, the director of photography route as well. You know, meeting with someone like Bradford, the passion for it does start to rub off on you, and you know, you get a little inspired when you're on set as well. So director of photography, possibly in the future. I think I'd like to direct in the long run, definitely. In the long run, I really want to go into producing. My ideal dream or job would be a full-time storyteller slash